Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video is going to be looking at the dot point outline the transport system in plants, including root hair cells, xylem, phloem, stomates, and lenta cells. So throughout this video, we're going to be having a look at each of these five structures, what they look like, how are they put together, so basically their structure, and then looking at their function, so how they are involved in uh, the transport systems in plants. So we've already had a little bit of a look at the root hair cells. So the structure of root hair cells is that they are grown in the zone of absorption. So that is the very end of the root tip. Okay, so the root, uh, sorry, the end of the root. So the root hairs grow on the outer surface of the root in the area under the soil which is involved in the absorption of water. So they are, are tiny structures. They are 5 to 7, that should be micrometres in diameter and 80 to 1500 micrometers in length. So they are extremely small. They are only able to survive for two to three weeks and then they are replaced with new cells. So their function is to increase the surface area for the absorption of water and minerals. So obviously by doing that, they're increasing the surface area of the roots by quite a significant amount. And as we know, by increasing that surface area, we're increasing the uh, available space for osmosis to take place for water to move into the roots as well as other minerals that come from the soil. So that's what I just said. So water moves into the roots via the cells, root hair cells, by the process of osmosis. So our root hairs would be made up of that semi-permeable membrane which ties in with our osmosis definition. So the next cells that we need to look at are the xylem cells. So xylem cells form part of the vascular tissue of plants, which is very similar to the circulatory system in animals. So the structure, they are made up of thickened dead vessels that are connected from end to end to make extremely long vessels that run all the way from the very bottom of the plant to the very top. So when looking at xylem under the microscope, we can see that they look spiral in structure. So here this top diagram actually really, def you know, greatly defines that spiral shape but when we have a look under the microscope, it just looks like lots of little hatched lines. And then on the next slide, we'll be looking at phloem, which are these longer elongated cells. So the function of xylem is to carry water from the roots up to the rest of the plant. So the xylem vessels run the whole length of the plant. So even the, you know, the tallest trees that live in the forest that are meters and meters tall, the xylem runs all the way from the roots all the way to the leaves. So basically the job of the xylem is to carry the water that the plants absorb through osmosis in the roots all the way to the leaves where the water is then used for the process of photosynthesis. So tying very closely to our xylem are our phloem vessels. So our phloem vessel structure is that they are made up of columns of living vessels that are connected with these cells called sieve plates. So the sieve plates form in between the really long vessels and they sort of act like basically sieves. So they filter the substances that move between the different phloem cells. They have companion cells which run alongside them to help them stay alive. So uh, in comparison to the xylem vessels, the xylem vessels are dead, whereas our phloem vessels are still alive. So the function of the phloem vessels is to carry the products of photosynthesis from the leaves to the rest of the plant. And this is a process known as translocation. Okay, so they can carry substances up or down depending on where the leaves are in relation to the where the products are needed. So as we see on some really tall trees or even flowers uh, such as rose bushes, you have the, the leaves that form sort of in the middle of the stem and then the rose bud towards the very top of the flower. So the products of photosynthesis, so the oxygen and the glucose that are created in the leaves, need to obviously travel up to the flower to provide it with energy to continue to grow. But the roots and things also need the glucose and oxygen in order to carry out photosynthesis, so it will also travel downwards. So one way to remember what the role of phloem is, is the P's, the three P's. Phloem carries the products of photosynthesis. So next we have our stomates. We've already looked at stomata a little bit. 
and their structure is that they are small openings on the leaves. They're usually found more on the underside of the leaf, which helps with the maintenance of water balance. However, they can also be found on the top of the leaves. They are controlled by these specialized cells that open and close, known as the guard cells. So the guard cells are these bean-shaped cells, and then the stomate is simply the opening in the middle. Okay, so when the cell has lots of water, or when the plant has lots of water, the guard cells fill up with water and they bulge outwards, allowing gas exchange to take place through the stomata. When the plant is lacking water, the guard cells become flaccid and they fall into one another and stop gas exchange from taking place. But the stomata's main role is to allow the movement of gases into and out of the leaf for photosynthesis, obviously. So carbon dioxide goes in, is used for photosynthesis, and then oxygen comes back out again. As I mentioned earlier, opening of the stomates also leads to water loss, so the plant needs to make sure that it has adaptations in place in order to combat that, depending on whereabouts they live. Next we have our lenticels. So the structure is that they are small pores on the surface of stems. Okay, so some people might see these and think they're just little nicks in the plant as a result of something else, but they're actually extremely important for some of it, some plants in order for them to be able to survive. So they're just little openings, and here we can see the opening goes all the way into the middle layers of the stem. So they are found more in woody stemmed plants and in some fruits. Their function is that they allow for the exchange of gases between the plant and the surrounding air, and they have the same function as the stomata in leaves. So they allow the gases to move in in order for carbon dioxide to be taken to the leaves for photosynthesis and oxygen to be removed so that uh, the oxygen can then enter the atmosphere. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. So we've now simply outlined each of the different structures. So with our five structures in the transport of uh, substances in plants and what we'll actually be doing over the next couple of videos is having a look more specifically at some of those particular uh, structures and how they work in order to keep plants functioning at 100%. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.